Losing weight is generally considered a positive, but that positivity assumes that the weight loss is dominantly fat mass. Yet, if you don't do these three things, you're very likely losing less body fat and more muscle mass. That's a huge problem because muscle mass protects against disease, preserves your functionality, allows you to fight off bears, and plays a major role in your metabolism. And in the end, why would we not want to avoid the loss of all of that if we easily can? That's especially true for older individuals getting into your 60s and progressively more with age. So why is that? Well, it's relatively simple. When you're trying to lose body fat, it is necessitous for you to be consuming less than your body needs to maintain itself. This causes the cells of your body to experience shift in cellular energy. By that, I mean the concentration of ATP or adenosine triphosphate, which is the primary cell energy molecule, and it drops. So protein synthesis machinery within the musculature also slows its ability to produce new proteins, keeping the muscle maintained. To describe that further, if we zoom into your muscle cell in your body, there are two primary sites where the cell energy influences the ability for us to maintain the muscle cell size and thereby the overall muscle size. One is the master signaling molecule called mTOR which, when active, activates downstream signaling molecules to ramp up the protein synthesis to generate new proteins for the cell. The more proteins produced, outpacing degradation of proteins, the larger the muscle cell gets. The second place that cell energy matters is, well, the actual protein synthetic machinery itself at the ribosome which translates information from your genes into the required proteins. Both of these sites, mTOR and the ribosome system, are sensitive to concentrations of ATP, meaning if ATP is abundant, mTOR can be stimulated and the ribosomes can function unimpeded, assuming all else is abundant. However, if cell energy drops as it does with weight loss, not only are both of these systems reduced in activity, but their counter systems, the protein degradation systems, are more active to generate substrate for energy generation, as well as amino acids for protein synthesis. So this back and forth balance between protein synthesis and degradation is critical for maintaining a large functional muscle. But since weight loss tilts things in favor of protein degradation, the risk of muscle loss increases. This is especially true for older individuals as well. As a matter of fact, we can see that in action in this study, where the researchers calorie restricted people for several days and then it measured their protein synthesis in their muscle. If we look at the data here, you can see that the fractional synthesis rate is on the vertical axis, and on the horizontal axis we see EB, which stands for energy balance, indicating that these people were not in an energy deficit. And the ED stands for erectile dysfunction. <laughs> I had you there, didn't I? It stands for energy deficit, the erectile dysfunction of energy. See? I can still make it connect. The individual dots and triangles are the data from the individual men and women in each group. The researchers show a reduced protein synthesis rate in those undergoing an energy deficit. That's a pretty sizable effect too. In relative terms, those consuming enough to maintain their energy state, the EB condition, had an almost 37% higher protein synthesis rate. That's nothing to sneeze at. It's kind of, a, you know, it always comes to these expressions. Honestly, where in the world did that expression come from? Nothing to sneeze at? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I get what it means, but who came up with that? <laughs> anyway, what can you do to fight this effect and tilt things back to normalizing protein synthesis in your muscles? Well, aside from stopping your weight loss, which would return cell energy levels to their previous state and stop the aforementioned catabolism, there are three main things that you can do. One, you must resistance train. While it is true that cell energy, ATP, is diminished in your cells, thereby reducing mTOR activity, resistance training has multiple mechanisms by which it alternatively activates mTOR. Many moons ago, 
I covered several studies on mTOR stimulation from resistance training. And your cells produce a molecule called phosphatidic acid from resistance training. That's an incredible mechanism related to your cell membrane and the conversion of another molecule, phosphatidylcholine. I won't go into it now, but the, the bottom line is the molecule, phosphatidic acid, enhances mTOR activity. So an independent mechanism of cell energy. Let's look at what happens to people who resistance train, shall we? To the data. This is the same data and same designations as before. So EB being energy balance, ED being <laughs> energy deficit. PL stands for placebo, but these individuals are resistance trained. And notice where that data is grouping together. It's about on par with the energy balanced individuals even though they are also in an energy deficit. So simply lifting weights recovers protein synthesis. How freaking cool is that? Okay, number two, you have to eat enough protein. Okay, it seems obvious, but let me explain why and show you the effect that it has in your cells. Again, just like resistance training, protein or more so the amino acid molecules that make a protein also alternatively stimulate mTOR. Keep in mind that in the images that you're seeing, there are simplifications of the process. It's usually multi-steps as described here. But as this isn't about the you know, molecular mechanisms of amino acid priming and activation of mTOR, I'm simplifying things. Just so that you're aware of the awesomeness that's bubbling underneath the surface of this casual video. Okay, back to the data. Now, we have the complete picture, but we've added two conditions. So 15G and 30G, which doesn't stand for grand like money, but grams like grams of protein. So post-resistance training, these participants consume 15 or 30 grams of protein. And as you can see, even in an energy deficit, they are able to outperform those that were in an energy balance. Now, think about the effect of doing nothing and losing weight, ED, for not just hours or days, but months. Eventually, that leads to not just your cellular detections, but visual and performance detections of having lost muscle. This is critical. How do we put this information together into a neat package of what is optimal? As in, when should you consume protein? How often should you lift weights to maximize this muscle preservation? And what other nuances should be considered? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, hold on. What was it I wanted to say here? Oh, right. Uh, join the Physionic Insiders. That's where you'll get the extended version of this video and all of my videos, including everything put together for you to use. Link is in the description. And I would really love to have you aboard. Number three, leucine. You know how we've been talking about protein and I briefly mentioned how proteins are made up of amino acids? Well, the most critical amino acid is called leucine. Why? Because leucine is a potent stimulator of mTOR. If we return to this study and we pop open one piece of data, we can see that the LEU condition there is leucine. The vertical axis is the phosphorylation or activation of a protein called S6 kinase, which is a measure of mTOR activity. If it goes up, that means that there's more mTOR activity. The other conditions don't matter as much, but if you're interested, the ALA is the amino acid alanine and INS is insulin. The minuses mean that the condition is not present and the plus means that the condition is present. In brief, leucine alone is more potent than insulin or alanine, but clearly not as potent as insulin with leucine or all three in combination. That's a story for a different time. The big takeaway for us is that leucine is an independent and potent in combination stimulator of mTOR. So while consuming protein as a whole is beneficial, consuming leucine rich protein is even more beneficial. Relatively rich protein sources of leucine are, you know, for example, like uh, salmon, uh, chicken, and other meats, or for more plant-based alternatives, uh, soybeans, combinations of nuts, chickpeas. Those are just a few examples, but you can easily just find others and mix and match, especially for plant-based. It may be especially necessary to mix and match, but it's entirely doable. Or if needed, 
You can also just consume a supplement that can help. But keep in mind that leucine alone is not sufficient, even if it is necessary. So this is how you maintain that precious muscle mass when losing body fat. If you're interested in more on nutrition specifics, I'd recommend this video right here. And otherwise, this one right here will also offer some useful insights. Speak with you over there.